super happy to have you all here at the University of Ottawa, which is on the traditional grounds of the Algonquin Indians. We're also on live stream, Facebook Live, so welcome to everyone who's uh, watching here today. So excited to be uh, with some special guests, as you saw walking in. But we have Debbie St. Jacques, who will be Canada's next astronaut in space. Is that <laughs> measurements, press button B, temperature measurements, 
So that's when science becomes to be fun. So what do you see? CO2 is very low when there's a lot of plants. We know that, because that's what they eat, right? That's how they grow. And we can see the temperature is the same in the metro and uh, uh, in the, uh, the greenhouse. We can compare relative humidity. So that's ah, similar in the metro and in the fridge. So then, then we start to have hypothesis and start to come up with uh, explanation. And that's what science is all about. And you'll be able, once you participate to this, to upload your data to a database, compare with data with, from other students, different places, and even compare with data that I'll be getting on the space station. And we can start having a discussion about the way the world works. I'm going to station, uh, I hope, <laughs> not too long from now. I'm getting ready. And it'll be an amazing opportunity to represent Canada up there and uh, do a bunch of science experiments. 
some more complicated than this, but all using the same methodology that you're going to learn uh, using this very, very nice experiment. So looking forward to uh, having a lot of fun up there and doing a lot of interesting research and being able to share the experience with many people. to look at the environmental conditions in, in space and here on Earth and how it's affecting our health and well-being. So we're really excited to be able to explore in a much larger way for you. Now I, I'm sure we've got lots of questions to come from the audience, but I'm thinking Minister Baines might kick off our question period. Well, thank you very much for that. I'm delighted to be here uh, this morning. Uh, I must confess, I have the coolest portfolio to be responsible for innovation, science, and economic development. And I'm responsible for a lot of things, but the best part is the Canadian Space Agency. And, and I vividly recall uh, in the, when we celebrated Canada's 150th uh, anniversary on Parliament Hill, the best part of the celebrations were uh, that we unveiled two new astronauts, uh, Jenny and Josh. And, uh, and Shania Twain was there as well, so I was there with my wife. <laughs> so my wife was really excited about Shania Twain, and I was so excited to uh, unveil the two new astronauts along with the Prime Minister. And there was a very grueling process. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of people that were involved, a lot of young people participated that were inspired by the process. Others who thought maybe they could recreate some magic, and they were later in their years and they tried to apply for it. People from different backgrounds from all across Canada applied astronauts and it was really exciting to see and, and uh, but as you know the, 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 you were involved in the selection process and recruiting those incredible uh, astronauts that we have so I guess the question for young people here and I've got two young girls as well one who's 11 and another one who's 8 years old and if they want to be astronauts going forward what's the most important quality or attribute that you look for in an astronaut what is the, what is the thing that distinguishes an astronaut versus some other, some, you know, some other profession well, I don't know if it's unique to astronauts. I don't think it's unique to astronauts. But one very, very important aspect of, for the astronaut profession is that when you ask an astronaut to do something and he says, yes, I can do this, it will happen. Trustworthiness and being able to live up to expectations and having a sense of responsibility. Uh, so I think that is something that uh, is really, really important for any any job where anybody gives you a mission, correct, or entrusts uh, their safety on you, or, or the result of any any task. So, and of course, it's good to be a scientist, and you have to be fit, and there's always other things you can imagine. <laughs> but that personality aspect, uh, and it's never too late. And you're never too young to start practicing making decisions, living with the consequences, being responsible, and doing what you promised you would do. No, I think that's that's so important. Trust. And accountability uh, is something that uh, can help you throughout your entire life. I and mean, I think that's a really powerful message for young people. And you not on wood, you're very excited about representing <laughs> Canada on the International Space Station, and we're very excited about that as well. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. On that. And I know that some of the students have some questions as well, so we'll open up to the students, right? Mm -hmm. We have a microphone as well. Remember, for the live stream, we want to make sure that you're mic'd. So, questions? Nope. So it's broken, so the training process for an astronaut is broken into pieces. So first, you have your whole life before, where you go to the university and you do sports and you learn languages, and you may not want to count that, but that's certainly part of what it takes to become an astronaut, right? Uh, then there's basic training, that's two years, uh, where at basic training you get to learn about using the spacesuit, using Canada, uh, how the space station works, the basics. Then once you get a sign, there's another two years of training to learn how the rocket works and to learn how, uh, more specifically, the task you're going to do as an astronaut. So depending how you count, it's between four years and your whole life. <laughs> yes? What passions you the most in your field of work? What passions do you want the most about the world? Ah, it's very hard to tell, to decide. Um, there's a couple of aspects that I find absolutely fascinating. Uh, first, there's 
the scientific and exploration aspect of it. It is a job of discovery. Um, but there's other aspects. Uh, it's an international space station. It's an international space program. I don't know if any of you have had the chance to travel yet, but it is one of the most amazing things you can do to interact with other cultures, learn other languages, and actually work with them. And in space, we prove every day that when we work together, the whole nation of the world, we can achieve incredible things. And then the third aspect that I find always emotional almost to me is how beautiful our planet is when we see it from up there. And that sense of responsibility that space has given us uh, to be good shepherds for our planet. I think we have a question yeah. over here. Yes. What inspired you to be an astronaut? What inspired me to be an astronaut? Well, as a, when I was a young kid, you know, when you're, you're a child, initially your universe is maybe, you know, just your parents, and then it's just <laughs> And then it gets bigger, and there's a few more people, and there's a whole house, and you realize, oh, there's a whole street, oh, maybe there's a little town, and then your bubble gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you realize you're from a country, you realize you're from a continent, you realize you're from planet Earth, and then one day, I don't know how old I was, five or six, I saw these pictures of the Earth seen from the moon. I said, okay, wow, that's a really big picture. So that sense of perspective, and of understanding what reality is, of where we come from, that was so strong uh, that really made me obsessed with anything to do with space and exploration. Okay. And that's where it started. Question there. Yes? What do you think is going to be your favorite part about going to space? Wow. I think first the rocket ride will be pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not too excited. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be 10 minutes. So an amazing ride, and then suddenly you're not on Earth anymore. Or something. I've already made my luggages. I was just packing. I'm like, I'm leaving Earth. Okay. That's the most <laughs> then I think the first thing I want to do is look back at our planet. And that's going to be a very strong moment. And then the third moment is going to be when we finally dock to the space station, open the hatch, and in this machine, which is just the machine out of metal and plastic, there's people living there, a human outpost, not on us. I think discovering that will be unbelievable, but that human experience of living somewhere else and in our travel will be a very, very powerful. Yes? Are you scared to go into space? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would be naive if I was not scared, because it is dangerous, right? But we all do dangerous things every day, uh, so when you're faced with something dangerous, what do you do? You train. You make sure your equipment is okay. And you practice, and you think twice, and you get the weather. And when you feel ready, there's ways to minimize risk quite a lot. So yes, I realize it's dangerous, but I'm well trained. I have full confidence in the thousands of people who work hard every day to make space flight as safe as we can. So yeah, of course, like anybody else, I feel fear when I'm about to do something intense and dangerous, but fear should never be a reason to not try. Fear is just a signal that you should stop and think and be careful. Um, what would you say was the hardest part of your training? The hardest part of the training uh, by far was all the traveling. Not because of the traveling, and this semester I think you will know what I'm talking about. When you're fortunate to have a job you love that takes you all over the world, different places all the time, and you have a family, juggling these two is very difficult. Because it's one thing to be a good astronaut, or a good minister, but you can also be a good husband, and a good father, and a good friend, and a good son. Uh, it's a big juggling act, right? Big, big juggling act. Uh, so, I don't know if you have any tricks to help me on that. Uh, <laughs> it's a very supportive family. Uh, yes. It makes a big difference. Very well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, there's, uh, you have greater responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to uh, keep that in mind and keep that perspective. And, and it's, it's a bit of a juggling act. Yeah. Uh, and it's about prioritizing, but you can't lose sight of the fact that uh, you're going to come back on Earth one day yeah. after this incredible mission, uh, and that uh, when the dust settles, uh, your family and friends matter, and so you got to make sure you are respectful of that, and uh, you find time for that. Being a good son or a daughter, being a good husband or wife, 
uh, being a good parent, those things really do matter. And like you said, it goes back to the first point you made about accountability and trust. Yep. And so that percolates through all of those responsibilities. And I even find, I don't know if you share this, but the only way I can be the best astronaut I can be is if I'm also the best husband and father and friend and son that I can be. Because that's when you're in balance, that you are at your optimum. The worst is to geek out and you just do one thing 100%. Then your overall performance goes down. Yeah. And you lose perspective. You lose perspective, yeah. And that was the point you made mm -hmm. uh, about the bubble. Yeah. Right? And you don't want to get caught up in one small bubble. And uh, I think that's such valuable advice, uh, not only as an astronaut, but just, again, good career advice yeah. and life advice as well. That's amazing. Keep in balance. Yeah. You know how you fly planes? Can you imagine yourself flying an airplane? Yeah. You know that you got all these dials, right? Engine pressure, oil pressure, temperature, air speed level. Everything has to be in the green, you say. If one dial is not happy, the plane is crashing. So your life is like that. Everything has to be in the green. <laughs> Aspirational. I think we have time for one more quick question. Yes, sir. How big is the space station? How big is the space station? It's pretty big. So the Americans say it's the size of a football field, but uh, for us, it's the size of five NHL ice cream. That's more accurate. <laughs> that's a better science, just to let you know. <laughs> that's the size of um, the solar arrays. It's a giant solar arrays. To, it's a solar, a solar machine, right? It's all solar power. Uh, it's got giant radiators. The, the, the parts that you can live in, it's about the size of like five or six school buses. So it's not, you know, it's not too small. It's not too small. Not too grand. The spacecraft that goes to the space station, though, the Soyuz, that's pretty grand. <laughs> Well, I think we could keep talking for another hour, and I, I really do want to just uh, thank you, all the, the students and teachers from the South from jo for joining us here today with great questions, really thoughtful. Thank you to David for coming to join us today. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be ready whenever. Absolutely. <laughs> We're collecting data together. And Minister Baines, thank you for your support of science, of space, of all that you do. Thank you for joining us here today. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And that is uh, very inspirational. This is why we do it. It's really about you guys. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, I've got two young girls as well. One of the key aspects today is obviously the science is amazing. I want to thank you, Bonnie, and Let's Talk Science uh, for all your uh, active engagement today but really is to inspire the next generation. Uh, and I want to thank Daida for not only being a great ambassador for Canada, not only being a great husband and a father and a great Canadian, but really inspiring the next generation. As you can see, there's smiles from cheek to cheek. Uh, and that's what it's all about. And uh, we as a government are committed uh, to science. We invest a lot of money in science. So please, if you want to pursue a career in STEM, uh, make, uh, make, uh, uh, do not hesitate. Make no mistake, uh, we have your back. We want to see young people involved in science and technology, engineering and mathematics, uh, and people like David uh, who inspire us. Uh, so we're really excited what the future is all about, and so thank you very much for this. Oh, absolutely, and I couldn't do these events without a great team behind the scenes, so just do want to do a shout out to our partners at the Canadian Space Agency and the Let's Talk Science Outreach team here at the University of Ottawa. So final call for the people on live stream, please to go to Let's Talk Science, check in on Living Space and register fast. So it's gonna be a great project and thank you all for coming today. The future, our future is in your hands. <laughs> in the head of young Canadian. That's where our future is. All right? So don't be shy. Go for it. Thank you.